Every gig is more stress, more people. I'm still worried about people from gigs and gigs ago. Last year on this tour, I got shingles. The old man's disease, shingles, which with all due respect, you do not get when you're a young, spunky piece of ass like this. <laughs> I didn't know shingles was chicken pox. If you've ever had chicken pox, you might get shingles. You never cure yourself, you neutralise it and you file it in your body, it stays there all your life, it knocks on every now and again, it goes, shingles! <laughs> when you're young, you go, piss off, I'm working. And then, as you get older, it's a bit like Jehovah's Witnesses, eventually it knocks on, you go, come in, I'll be glad of the company. <laughs> you just get shingles, cos you're too tired not to have shingles, to be honest, and it doesn't attack your whole body like chicken pox, it picks one nerve, and in my case, it was the nerve that starts there on the back and just runs across the left breast there. And your first warning signs, it goes a bit itchy like that, but it's quite nice to scratch it, so... You know something's wrong cos you're getting stared at in Asda. <laughs> He's down the cereal aisle for about half an hour like that. <laughs> you can hear people come in, ''Oh, we'll come back for the shreddies, kids.'' <laughs> Let that man get his breakfast first. I bet he masturbates in the hairdressers, dirty pig. <laughs> so he keeps scratching, it gets sore and sore. Eventually we were watching telly and my wife said, what's the matter? And we talked about it. She's much more proactive than I am. So she said, you're gonna have to go to the doctors, right? So Friday morning I went to the doctors and I described it and I said, look, I think I've got shingles. And she said, well, it does sound like shingles, Mr. Richardson, but to put your mind at rest, you can't possibly have shingles, you're far too young. And I said, well, is it possible to have shingles of the soul? I said, because I might look young to you, but inside I'm thrice the age I appear. <laughs> and she said, well, you've used the word thrice there, so perhaps it is shingles. <laughs> I said, thrice isn't a word for your generation. And I said, well, can I take something? It's really hurting. She said, well, I don't want to give you the shingles medication. It's really strong. You have to take it for a month. Go away over the weekend and see what happens. Now, what happened that weekend is this itching became a line of weeping pus-ridden sores. <laughs> yeah, not the best weekend of my life, that one, if I'm to be honest with you. <laughs> Not the worst, I lived in Swindon five years, but <laughs> not the best. So I got an emergency appointment, I went back on Monday and I showed her like that. She went, fucking tits on that. <laughs> felt was a bit unprofessional, to be honest. But <laughs> they are lovely. Um, that's the state of the NHS these days, isn't it? You know, until we get out and that 350 mil kicks in. But for now, we're stuck. <laughs> I showed her, I said, what do you think? She said, well, I'm afraid you have got shingles. I said, well, I told you that. Can I have the medication now? No word of a lie. She said, yeah, I'm afraid it's too late. I should have given you that on Friday. <laughs> do laugh, cos it is funny, isn't it? It's fucking hilarious is what it is. We had a right laugh. I said, well, what am I supposed to do? She said, well, my friend, there's nothing you can do now except go home and try and relax. Shingles is stress-related. You need to try and calm down. And nothing chills you out like a couple of weeks at home, sat on your own couch, mopping pus off your tits. <laughs> Just... Every day felt like a holiday in the Bahamas. It really did. I chat, bring us another kitchen roll and some lil. I'm having the time of my life here. I really am. <laughs> Um, I don't think I really got uh, shingles because of Twitter, if I'm honest. Um, and to be honest, I've got bigger stuff to worry about than uh, audience members. I, since my last tour, I've got married and had a child, which is why the tour's really called The Old Man, in the sort of colloquial sense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the applause of people who don't have to live with me there. Well done. You're all off the hook. So I called it The Old Man in the, in the colloquial sense. You know, oh, what's the old man up to? Oh, he's upstairs turning lights off. Uh, you know, I've been very lucky to find the woman who completes me, and my wife is very good at turning lights on. <laughs> Leaving the fridge door open, that kind of thing. You getting anything out of the fridge? Huh? Didn't think so, since you're in the fucking lounge. <laughs> Say it to her face, John. Say it to her face, John. No, thank you. She'll find out when the DVD comes out. <laughs> and by then, I'll be in the shed. Um, no, I, I'm very lucky to have got married, let's be honest, cos these aren't jokes. I'm like this all the time. Uh, can great a bit. I'll level with you. And I have to thank TV advertisers, really, for teaching me about women, because uh, I'd never had a long relationship, really. I didn't know what women like, but I would watch telly, and during the adverts, i think, well, if this is how big companies appeal to women, having researched, these must be the things that women like. So I would use that information when we were courting. If it was a nice day, I'd say, oh, look, the sun's out. Would you like to go to the park and eat a yoghurt? I never knew how much you women like a yoghurt in the park. <laughs> I eat mine at home, sometimes at the fridge door, I'll knock one down. I didn't realise I should be getting dressed up and taking the thing to the friggin' park. <laughs> Watch the adverts, oh, well, she ain't got a bag with her, so she's not out anyway, and that's a silver spoon, she's brought that from home. <laughs> this is a planned yoghurt. So, you know, we had some lovely yoghurt days out. Uh, 
some companies lie to you, you have to be careful. Uh, the rollerblades I got for her period, she's never used them. <laughs> Not once. Not even to make me feel better. Still in the box with the white jeans. Unbelievable. Contacted body form for a refund. They say it's not their responsibility. Acceptable. Uh, but she agreed to marry me. We had a lovely wedding day. People always say to you, oh, wedding day is one of the best days of your life. And you'll know if you're planning a wedding, it really is. Uh, and a reason the wedding day is one of the best days of your life is for me, that's the day that as a couple, you really stop planning a wedding. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of admin, but that pushed me to the very brink. It really did. <laughs> I didn't know you had to plan everything. Why would I pick the flowers? I don't know about flowers, and I'll let you know a secret, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care if my wife says to me, do you remember Mark and Becky's wedding? I don't say, remember it, those chrysanthemum. <laughs> I'll say what I remember about every wedding I've ever been to, what time the bar opened and how much a pint was. That is, <laughs> wedding's a party, isn't it? Get everyone you love in a room and get them drunk. It's that simple, you know. Who are these people keeping the bar shut till after dinner? Are you worried people are going to have fun too early? Get the bar open. Oh, don't worry, there's a bottle of each on the table at dinner. Is there? Lovely, nice, warm bottle of white wine between 12 of us. <laughs> that will lube up the chit-chat. Perhaps when you get back from the honeymoon, we'll have a quick chinwag about how interesting you think your friends are. <laughs> Just get the bar open, I don't understand. There's so much rigmarole around weddings that doesn't need to be there. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want, I didn't want to cut the cake. I don't understand why in the 21st century we're still making a display. I think people have seen cake now. You don't need to call them back in the room. Get in there, they're going to slice up a fruit loaf. Holy shit! <laughs> don't forget your camera. Oh, yeah, better get a picture. No one's going to believe this. <laughs> and then they slice the cake live. Just slice the cake, hand it out. No one's going to eat the fucking thing anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> I didn't want any, uh, I didn't want any dancing. I didn't want a first dance. I didn't want a dance floor. I didn't want any of that. I don't like dancing. I think it's for arrogant people who can't communicate verbally. <laughs> think, just stand still and enjoy the music. What's wrong with you people skipping around all over the place? You should be punished. You get put on telly in sequins. You should be masking tape to the floor. <laughs> I'm going to put an album on now and I want you to try and enjoy that cerebrally with the rest of us. <laughs> skipping around like a prick. They're the same people who sing along to music that's in their headphones. Those arseholes. Just, oh, sorry, was I too in the vibe? No, you're a prick. <laughs> that's the main problem I'm having with you there. I didn't want any dancing, I don't like it, you know. I'll be honest with you, I can't think of a punishment worse than you getting everybody I love in a room, making them form a circle and making me dance in the middle of it. <laughs> I wouldn't do that any day of my life, let alone the one day I've paid for all of these pricks to have dinner. <laughs> What a curious thank you that is. That was a lovely meal. Now dance for your grandma. <laughs> I'd rather they watch this consummate the wedding. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd have been happier tapping a champagne glass. Do you want to come upstairs? We're going to have the first shag now. <laughs> Everybody up. Come on. Family occasion this. Bring your cameras. <laughs> Would have been quicker as well, I'll tell you that. 